Hello all. Uh, this is a video for those who've asked for uh, Linux GT 32-bit. Uh, here you can see I have FileZilla open and uh, that's my internet connection. Upload speed, so it's a couple hours at least to upload uh, 742 megs or so. Um, so I'm hoping uh, probably by the time you see this video, it'll probably be a week from the time of this recording. What I wanted to do is just demonstrate uh, basically how it would go in a 32-bit environment in uh, VirtualBox. And yeah, I know. Okay. Um, so I'll click New and Arch. I was going to pick up 30, uh, 64 because of my system. There we go. I put in 32 and it picks that up. And uh, next, I'm going to leave it at 768, the bare minimum I imagine uh, 8 gigs of hard drive space will be plenty and create I'm not going to mess too much with around with I'm not going to mess around too much with the settings maybe floppy I'm going to leave the processor at 1 display I guess 32-bit uh, I mean sorry most cards will have at least 28 megs I'm 128 maybe okay I'll Maybe not. I'll drop it down to 64 or so. There we go. Storage. Uh, I got the audio. I'm gonna have to put to null because I only have a uh, Pulse Audio installed. So storage would be the uh, one I'm uploading, which is oh, there it is, 32-bit. Its raw size is 778 megs. Open. Uh, if I go to full screen, I'm gonna untick full screen. All right, so let's power this up and we'll see how we do with a minimum spec. Well, approximately minimum spec. So I'm using the uh, Architect Linux installer. I haven't changed the logo yet. I'm sorry. Uh, but it's a uh, Linux GT 64-bit. Uh, I mean, 32-bit. So I'm just going to press enter here. And hopefully this will pass a bit of time while well, I'm waiting for this uh, upload to finish. Okay, so once you boot, uh, give it some time. If your system is uh, not uh, very quick, it will should load, I hope. So we'll just uh, click the install Linux GT and just select your uh, region, your language, and prepare the installation and set your virtual console to your country. Uh, keyboard layout, same idea. Uh, partition disk. Uh, this comes with Gparted. And I guess I'll uh, allocate a, a swap file as well. So, uh, device, uh, create new partition table. And it's MS DOS. And we're going to add, say, approximately six. One, two, three uh, gigs. And this will just right click. Oh, I'm sorry, add another one. And under here, whatever's left, I'm just going to select Linux swap. Click add. Okay. It's an approximation, so you click zip. Check and apply. And yes. Oh, there we go. It's done. So I'll close the G parted. And we're going to mount partitions. Uh, STA1 is our, where the root partition is, extension 4. When it gets the swap file, just say none, okay, because it's already allocated. And we'll select done back and install base. And this will take uh, quite a number of minutes to install. So I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, I uh, should note that I compiled this on November the uh, 5th, I believe. And it's November, what, 17th today? 14th, I'm sorry. Getting ahead of time. Okay, so. I'm running out of time, so we run the mkinit uh, command, and should everything should go okay for this? Install the bootloader, make uh, grub two, and make sure you have the right device. If you only have one hard drive, then obviously SDA. Go back. Uh, now you configure the base. Uh, use the unique partition code. Uh, set your host name. 
anything you want. I'm just going to choose VBox, virtual box, your time zone, and so on. Okay, so when you're done with all that, uh, just press back. Uh, you can review the configuration files. I'm going to leave pretty much everything at default, so just go back, option 11, done, and close installer. And just simply reboot. Uh, there's already 46 updates since that's why I mentioned when I compiled this. So uh, restart uh, or shut down your choice. All right, so it seems a little more responsive after uh, restarting. So I just resize the screen a bit. Uh, the first one issue we want to address is the Pac-Man uh, keyring. This uh, can take a while. So we'll have to, uh, since we're not using 64-bit, uh, I made alias or uh, editing the Pac-Man configuration file. So in the terminal, I just type fig, short form for config, comment out uh, these two lines. And then we have to do uh, a couple other things. So just open the terminal and just type in, as I said, fig and your password. And go down to, uh, where is it? Right here. Where it has multilib. Just a pound sign, number sign in front of those. Control S to save and control Q to quit. And then uh, just take this sudo to here. This line, just copy the entire line and paste it in and press enter. Uh, this will take, this could take quite a while depending on the connection. Uh, the first part seems to go fast, and uh, other packages uh, may take some time to refresh. Okay, so once it's done, uh, you see here, uh, just type in another alias as p sync pacman sync, and press enter. Okay, if you get that, just simply restart the computer or do what it says here if you want. Just I'll just copy and sudo and then rm that lock file. And try it again. If not, just restart. There we go. It's resyncing. It's just because it's a little slower uh, updating the database. So you can close this uh, document now. All right. If you're not getting a message from PanMac, the updater, uh, you can either uh, try refreshing it with the update manager. And there you go. And since this uses a lot of uh, Arch Linux user repositories, they're going to edit their preferences because we want to keep those packages up to date. Uh, you can remove unrequired dependencies if you want. I usually do. The Arch Linux user, make sure that's on. Search and check for updates and close. And let's see if we refresh if there's anything else. Okay, so 46 updates. So you just click apply and probably won't be uh, prompted for a password, but there is one package to build from the Arch Linux user repository. So just give that some time to download. And then you'll have to go through a confirmation of installing the uh, Arch Linux uh, repository, user repository package. After uh, installing those updates, I recommend just a uh, reboot. And then you can make sure you unmount the ISO image in your file manager. And I'm not sure what happened here, but in the installer, I forgot to tell it to remove the this skeleton directory. So you can move to the trash and I don't know if you can empty the trash yep okay you don't need it okay sorry about that it's just an, an oversight uh, if you want a Firefox OBE it you know I I find this annoying as I, I've, I've written here so it's okay uh, but there's a lot of th things I don't uh, like as much so just to close this out and you'll notice some changes uh, you just have to write, uh, type in a terminal. I'll just copy it. Or copy and paste into the terminal this box OBE underscore OBE. And then uh, hopefully that'll still work. And your password. And that's it. And let's try Firefox again. Oh, yeah. There we go. So it's more, it's just a few things I tweaked. And you don't have to do any of this if you don't want to. All right. And change wallpaper. Yeah, you just uh, just read the instructions here. It's fairly straightforward. And uh, 
I think everything else is uh, should be self-explanatory in these documents. If you right-click, which is strange, I'm not sure, properties, uh, that's what I intended it to be, to show documentation, but it doesn't come up until you select the properties. Um, if you're wondering where this is, this is in, uh, if you go into your uh, file manager, PC man, FM, USR, share, uh, documentation, Oop. and there's where they are there. If you ever decide to close this, the documents are still here. Okay. Okay. So everything seemed to go well, uh, as far as I can tell, because I don't have an actual 32 bit machine to test this on. And the underlying architecture of the machine is obviously in my computer is, is still going to pick up that it's a multi core 64 bit processor. However, it gives you an idea. If you're wondering what this, uh, this is a Typhoon. I thought it was a neat application. You just type in some anywhere. I replaced the, uh, what do you call it, the default one uh, with this. I think it's a little more modern. Uh, so New York, I guess, to, just for a test. Click the, hit the check sign. And Celsius, so we'll go back to the settings and you want Fahrenheit. You can have uh, temperature, you can change the coloring under settings here. And uh, refresh is here, of course. And you can move it around uh, to wherever you want. And when you're done, you just close, okay? And the rest is in the uh, menus here. Uh, I just installed the uh, hard, hardware info. You want a, just a summary of what's going on. As you can see, it's picking up the my uh, processor. And I think that should be it. I'm not sure there's a, I can't remember right. There's a monitor here. <sighs> Task manager. There we go. So it's uh, you know, use it's using 256 in a in a virtual machine. So you should be. I, I'm hoping this will be safe for you to use on a if you want to on a netbook or something. Uh, that might be stretching it, but maybe you could try that if you have one kicking around. All right. So thank you to everyone for trying this out and helping me out, and uh, obviously uh, nods toward Brett Stevens for the concept and to Carl Duff. For the awesome uh, installer that uh, you helped me out with and thank you to everybody for watching and that should do it for this one so we'll talk to you soon and bye for now